All right, welcome on in. We got ourselves a <laughs> SCCA Spec Racer Ford race here. Beautiful Daytona International Speedway Road Course, circa 2007. We've taken the time machine back in time. We got this sucker up to 88 miles an hour, and the flux capacitor was fluxing. We made it to 2007. Daytona. Bumpy Daytona. Here we go. Matt Mullen starting third in the number one car. I'm supposed to win this sucker. Let's see what happens. Bets have been reset. Everybody has a thousand turkey legs. Beware. Better beware. Every two weeks, you can win $12 iRacing gift card. It's a little something I do to give back to the community. And I like to promote gambling. Because it's fun. Think I'm going to win? Then you bet win. Think I'll get second place to fifth place? Bet top five. If you think I'll just finish the race, sixth place on, bet finish. If you think I'll wreck in a big fiery explosion, bet crash. It's just that simple. Here we go. Be careful on a freaking standing start on where it's sitting at an angle. Go. Green, green, green. Oh! Nailed it. Wow, what a dick. The wolf! Seven. What's in the box? Zero gravity. Right side. Clear. Nice. The wolf dropped in seven months. Thank you, sir. We're doing great. We had an overtake. Oh, a little wide there. This thing doesn't have the best rotation. <laughs> Locking him up. He did too. Rotation. Oh, we're going to need to get in this draft. Can't be screwing that up. all over me. Igor? Whew. No, don't side draft. Oh, he's right going to kill side. me. We're all dead. Still there. Still there. Where is he? Oh, there he is. Okay, I'm going to let him by. Clear on the right. Strategic. I just wanted to get his uh, YouTube channel name. Get the draft, buddy. I'm not going to do much up here. Don't worry. Don't let me buy. Subscribe now. Igor Sim Racer. We got a little, got a little uh, slipstream action. Clear. Next car is the leader. You're in second. Keep it tight. Igor had a little slip up there. Fun out, looks like. Yes. Kind of hard to uh, downshift in this car when you're not using the clutch. You really got to jam the throttle. Two car tango. <laughs> Poor Igor. Let's use this draft.
5200. Igor just spun out or something in the infield. Close one. Hey, Kevin. Maybe I should be using second gear. I just don't know. Push to pass. Go, bathtub, go. Third, I think, is better, probably, if you do it correctly. It's like a big go-kart. Turn on the turbo? Well, I got it on right now. This might be the big turkey leg killer already. <laughs> well, if you bet all and you lose your bet, there's you don't lose anything because you go back to a 1,000. You start with a thousand, if you lose everything you have a thousand. Car on your right. Going for the pass, into the bus stop. Still there. Clear. Clear. Now he's gonna pass me. It's great fun. Hey Car Pro, what's up dude? Is the difference between the new Daytona and the old that big? Yeah, they repaved most of it, and uh, the bus stop's right different side. a little bit, and it's just super bumpy. Uh, this old Daytona is much bumpier. Yeah. Is this a league? No! This is official Spec Racer Ford race. You can win money if you uh, finish in the top three of your division. It, it pays out iRacing credits this year, this season. We're not exactly going for that, but... No, no, no. I gotta be careful on turn one. Alright, we gotta catch back up. I can get the draft. I think so. 1.3, we're good. This guy'd be definitely good enough to run away with it if we get outside of draft. Did I fix it from Friday night? Well, I don't want to jinx anything, Papa, but <laughs> it seems as though we have zero dropped frames so far. Really, that 1x? Boy, he's good out of there, huh? We might have lost him. Not gonna lie. The Friday night roar before the 24? Yeah, I'll probably do it. I right, better nail turn one here. Hey, John Theodore, welcome. Damn. Yeah, he's 
pretty good. Send it down pit road for the old shortcut arena. I don't have a visor tear off button for this car. The MX-5, I think I usually take the Mustang over the Mazda when the roar comes around. But if I do two races, I'll do the Mustang and then the Mazda, but yeah. I just love the Mustang so much. Something about it. You know, second place isn't bad either. One X. Nope. Hey, Nighty. First place is even not better, though. Yes. Who bet win? I can't read it. Hold on. I still can't read it. It's just a warm up race. Never second gear. He murders turn one. Let's just concentrate on not getting any more uh, X's. Hey, checkers, you bet 90th. Hopefully, we can do better than 90th. Fifty six hundred. Need a control T in my life. Nope. Uh oh, what was that? Wait, how do you uh it's alt T, alt T I think. There we go, that's a tear off. Whoa, what does control T do? Probably broke something. Hey Shnoya Pikam, welcome. Wait, uh, so the Roar is an official race that counts for SR? Yes. It's a special event. It's an official race. There's like three or four or five of them. What does Alt F4 do? I don't know. You want to try it? Can we get a checkered flag overlay just to practice for the next race? Yeah, sure. Oh, boy. Oh, that's, that's something special, isn't it? Hey, you like that? <laughs> Seizure warning. What is the checkered flag overlay? Oh, you want to see it? There it is. It's pretty neat. It's a new thing I racing did. Pretty cool.
It's fun, huh? Well, we're just gonna lolly gay and uh, get our second place and be uh, happy with it. I'm, I, I'm happy with it. If I wouldn't have screwed up turn one that one time, I would have stayed with him. But he's obviously way faster to race with than I am. Your head goes crazy? Instead of overtake, you should have a blue flag overlay. Yes. So we're going to do GT3 next. We'll have time to practice. It's at Spa. My license class right now is sitting at an A class 1.75 or 1.76, somewhere around there. So this, even, I mean, I had one off, one X so far in this race, but I'm not going to get much SR for this race. It will not put us over 2.0. So we're going to have to keep it pretty safe for GT3. Which means don't make any moves like the one move I made the other day. Dumb. <laughs> Kevin. It's probably fun for the guys behind me. Look how close they're running. Spec Racer 4 can be pretty fun, actually, but when you get spread out, you know, by yourself, it's not much fun. Yeah, Spa is a good track for SR. Drifting, drifting Reno. What's the uh, strength of field for this race, Profile? Or anybody. Can't rate it. Do you, like this, do you like this or the Skippy better? Ah, Skippy for sure. I don't particularly love either one of them, but... You know what I like? Good racing. Two, 2,000? Hey, that's not as bad as I thought. I like anything where you can get good, competitive, tight racing. And that's why, you know, some people may call me a... I don't know what they'd call me, but... I, I mean, I do drive a lot of slow cars, like the Mazda, the Mustang, the Skippy, the... You know, I don't really drive the Spectre Support that much, but... Like I always say, the slower the car, the tighter the racing. I mean, some of my best races I've ever had is with the Mazda or the Mustang. And they're not particularly fast cars. It's just that when you're going that slow, the draft comes into play a lot more, and it's just tighter racing, and you can manage the tight racing much easier in a slower car. It makes for a really fun time. Matt likes it tight. Hit the GRC jump next lap. Can't find him, grind him. Yeah. My favorite car is the limo. Yes. The slowest this is almost too slow, and there's not much participation. The thing about it is, you gotta have good participation. You gotta have a bunch of people signing up. Because the more people you have, the more closer the skill set is amongst you and the other racers on the track. So it's gonna be closer racing. But I think that's why the Skip Barber is so popular and so much fun and so populated. It's good, tight racing. Yeah, it gets a little dirty. But that's just open wheel for you. And there's so many people that sign up, so you're always kind of driving around people that are about your same skill level. I mean, they have races go off every hour, just like the Mazda. And it gets filled up, man. There's multiple splits almost every time. Has the apron been addressed this week? The apron is addressed every every week every year uh, unfortunately this is the 2007 Daytona so they don't have the cones on the apron I don't know why they didn't add them when they added them to the other Daytona it's always been a big controversy with slow cars here at Daytona whether or not you can go on the apron you're not supposed to like, why don't they just put in some cones right there like they did the new one do I like the radical <sighs> That's just another one of those cars where I would race it more if more people would sign up for it, you know? 
but it's like once a week, I think they have like one populated, they have like a scheduled strength of field race. But the Radical's pretty cool, yeah. It's like a mini HPD. It's hard getting used to for me because the uh, steering wheel's on the right side of the car. I don't really like driving those types of cars. But trust me, if any car has participation, I'm in it. Like the Nissan and the uh, GTO, like that series completely died. And it's a shame because I started driving that Nissan and uh, it was pretty fun for a little while. It is a tough car to race though, for sure. I think I like the Nissan better than the GTO though. Yeah, you guys talking about the apron? So you can use the apron when the track is flat. So when you're not in the corner, like a high high banked corner on the oval. Supposedly that's when you can use it. I would just stay off. Of it. The right side is the correct side? Well, it depends on where you live. <laughs> Tissue TM? Oh boy. boy. I hope we get this race completed before it rains here. Looks like it's gonna rain. Anybody check the weather? We had, like, freezing rain last night. It was kind of dangerous. I had to drive home from Samantha's house. It's like a 40-minute drive through, like, country roads, like, back roads. And I'm like, can't tell. Is the pavement wet or is it a sheet of ice? I can't tell. So I just kind of drove a little slow, like 40 miles an hour. It's not worth it. If you get a 40 minute, if it's a 40 minute commute somewhere or a drive somewhere at normal highway, regular speed limit speeds, if you cut that in half, who cares? It's like 20 minutes added to your drive and you get there safe. You know what I'm saying? So in the winter, you guys driving on these roads, just take it easy. You're not saving that much time by driving 10, 20 miles per hour faster, okay? You might as well take it slow, get there safe. Then you end up in a friggin' ditch somewhere. Calling triple A. Your friggin' man, your legs broken into the dashboard. Being safe is boring. <laughs> Plus my front tires are I really need to get new tires for my car. It's it's I should have already gotten them before winter, but the front ones are real bad. The rear ones are okay. But it's front wheel drive, so. But I don't want to drop. I mean, it's like $150 a tire, almost $200 a tire. It's like, really? That's a lot of rubber. Pretend I'm driving the Slostis. Okay. Wow, this Slostis is a lot of fun. Just rotate the tires? That's what I thought about doing, yeah. You drive a semi in um, um, Montana? Is that Montana or Minnesota? It's effing crazy watching people go 60 on the ice. Yeah. Well, I know that when it's snowing out, like semi trucks that are actually loaded, they do actually have better traction than like a Geo Metro. That's why when it's like really bad snow, you are like, whoa, you're driving slow and you're getting passed by by trucks. It's because it got much better. They got just so much heavier. But yeah, when I'm driving in the snow. I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna chill here in the right lane. And you see like people like in a, whatever, like a Honda Civic just freaking flying. I'm like, holy shit, dude. I think it's got a death wish. It's not the fact that you're just gonna all of a sudden spin out and go into the ditch. It's the fact that you're, you, you're overdriving your stopping power, really. Hey, Fred, what's up? Mr. Malone, Showdown 1983. I'm buying my first used car tomorrow. Things to be wary of? It's by Saul Slenderman. Uh, yeah, okay, there's a couple of things. Okay, there's a couple of things. Okay, there's a couple of things. Make sure they fill the gas tank before they sell it to you. You know, that's one That's one of those things, you know? I remember when I bought my, my car, and on the test drive... Okay, the thing was freaking bone dry. Okay, the thing was bone dry. So on the test drive, we had to go get fuel. 
And he's like, here, just pull in. I'm, I'm driving, you know, I'm test driving it. And he's in the car. He's like, yeah, just pull into this gas station over here. We gotta get some fuel. I'm like, yeah, it looks like it. I think it was bone dry. It was bone dry. And uh, he puts in like $4 worth of fuel. I'm like, uh, okay. And then it was, I didn't buy it that day. I, it was like the next, I waited like two days, slept on it, you know. And then I bought it. And I'm like, son of a bitch. I'm like, I should have told them to fill the gas tank. I'm like, come on. Like, it's the little things, you know. And then, like, make sure you have two sets of keys. I only got one set of keys. Make sure the, 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 make sure the manual is in the glove box. These are simple things the dealer should, uh, should uh, give you. Like, it should be a no-brainer. And they're like, oh, yeah, we got that extra key, and we got the manual. We'll, we'll, we'll mail it to you. And you know what? I never got it. And I, I followed up on that like three times. They're like, oh, yeah, 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 we got it. We got it. We're going to send it to you. Never freaking got it. I'm like, unbelievable. I'm never buying a car there again. I mean, that's just little things. It's the little things that count, you know? Other than that, I, you know, make them, you know, fucking uh, maybe check the tires, you know? Make sure be like, hey, man, these... These things aren't really rubbing correctly, you know. This thing may need an alignment and a tire rotation, you know. Check the check the tire wear, you know. You gotta check it all around. You know, you, some of those places you can you can test drive it for 24 hours. You can take it home, and uh, you know, try to figure out everything wrong with it. If you know anybody that's like a mechanic, have them look at it and, and get a list of all the things that is wrong or potentially wrong or anything that needs maintenance with it. And tell the dealer, big, look, all this shit needs to be done with it. I want to be dropping X amount of hundreds of dollars for a tune-up on this thing. Let's let's knock some money off this thing, or you guys fix it before you sell it to me. Just be a dick. Not a dick, but just be like, hey, listen, this is a huge investment I'm making. You know, you gotta make it right for me. Don't just don't just cower to their freaking they got a suit and tie on, big deal. You're the one handing over the money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, make sure the blinker fluid's full, you know? Make sure all the all, all, you know, make sure it had an oil change. You know, all this stuff, you know, it's all, the, for the dealer, that's like nothing for them. It's like, why don't you give me a car that's road ready, you know? God, Malone, well, quit rambling. <laughs> Muffler bearings are highly important. Yes, definitely. Uh, but you got to drive it on some rough roads. See if, you know, don't have the radio on when you're test driving it. Shut the freaking radio off. You may have to roll down the windows, go on some rough roads, see if you hear any any clunking, any clanking, any 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 is it, is, it, is it feel okay? Does the steering wheel feel like it's it's a little loose or something? Is there a lot of play? You know, it's things like this. Oh, checkered flag, we win. Oh, we didn't win, but it was fun. Good win, man. Great job, driver. All right. <sighs> Matt, you're missing one important part. Make sure it has an engine, yes. Test drive it like you stole it. Well, don't fuck it up too much. And remember, with a new car, this is what I've heard. I've never bought a brand new car, nor I don't think I ever would. But uh, with a new car, they say, I don't know about today, but I remember my dad telling me a long time ago, you're not supposed to drive brand new cars, like, super fast. Like, uh, you're not supposed to go over, like, 60 miles an hour for, like, the first whatever, 1,000 or 2,000 miles or something. I don't know if that's still true. And it may only be true with certain cars. I don't know. <sighs> Engines have a break in time, yeah. I'd never have to worry about that because I never bought a brand new car. But you always worry. Like, hey, what about the guy that first drove this? That bought the, you know, let's say you're buying a used car. Hey, how do you know the guy took care of it, you know? It's, it's just one of those things. I don't know. I don't have much experience with it. I've, o I've only ever owned... I've owned a total of only three cars in my entire life. Because I buy them, I pay them off, and then I drive it into the ground. And then I buy another one. <laughs> Turkey Timeline brought to you by Taxico. Oh! Everybody getting all crumpled up. When I got my first car, dude told me to floor it a few times. <laughs> The dealers. I've I've known a couple of car dealers, uh, car dealer people, like car salesmen in my life, like my friends. Dude, they don't know much about cars. <laughs> and I don't even know much about cars, so for me to distinguish whether or not they know stuff about cars, uh, they got to be pretty bad, you know? 
My coworker. See, if I ever bought a car now, if I ever was looking at a used car, I would definitely have my coworker look at it because he knows cars. Like he, he he knows exactly what to look for, what to hear for, what to smell for. That guy's into the pit barrier. Hey, it's Corkatized. Welcome, dude. They know how to sold slick and sing papers. Yeah, it's really ridiculous. My dad worked as a Toyota dealer in the 70s. Knows jack shit about cars. <laughs> Travis. <laughs> That's funny. Your best thing is to take it to somebody that knows cars, you know? Like, my dad's a mechanic. Uh, he's been a mechanic his whole life. Not a car mechanic, but my dad does know cars. Uh, take it to him, you know? Or, like, my coworker. But, uh, yeah. I don't plan on... I don't think I'm planning on buying a new vehicle anytime soon. I'm just gonna get new tires for the Ford... There's a couple of things I gotta fix on it, like the uh, the heater switch. The heater switch only works on full blast. Like the heater and the air conditioning knob, it has a setting one, two, three, four. It only works on four, which is really annoying. How are you, Matt? Hey, Jay, hi. I'm doing good, brother. There's no point in buying a brand new car. Once it leaves the dealership, it loses 5% value. Yeah, I know, exactly. And unless you're like, you got the money and you custom, like you went on the website. And I bought a custom brand new whatever, you know, with all all the options that you want. And, and one of those things where you just wanted to. But, yeah. I hear you on that one. Jeez, these guys are going at it. Matt, I won my first race on this track. Started 14th. Nice, dude. We're taking it to a mechanic and basically just asking him, yo, can I drive this piece of garbage 20,000 miles without spending more than 4,000 on repairs? If the answer is yes, I'm buying it. <laughs> Win a race, Matt. $10. Yay. All right, there you go. That was Spec Racer Ford at Daytona. Second place, I'll take it.